All right, so uh, I'm going to talk about a uh, rendering project that uh, I've, I've been working on. Uh, and uh, it's mostly about taking highway shields, the little symbols with the numbers on them that uh, we're used to seeing in the US, and putting them on an open street map rendering. Uh, as you guys probably know, if you live here in the US, uh, we maps here usually have the shapes of the, the different routes put on the maps uh, to, to differentiate you know, interstates from US highways, from state routes, and uh, all the other big uh, uh, map providers online do something with those. Uh, you know, you, you can see Google, Bing, MapQuest here all have, to one degree or another, uh, the interstate shields and OpenStreetMap, as you're probably familiar with, uh, just uses the, a textual representation that, uh, you know, my understanding is that works well for the way they do routes in Europe, but it doesn't fit well with what we have here, and I didn't like the look of it. Uh, and on top of that, in the US, we have a lot of places where more than one route is on the same road. Uh, this is a segment in Maryland where uh, Interstate 83 and Interstate 695 are on the same road. And you can see Google and Bing at least put something there. MapQuest actually pairs the, the two up together. And on this particular bit of rendering, OpenStreetMap doesn't do anything because it doesn't have space to write out I-83 semicolon I-695. So that bothered me. So I developed a rendering that puts shields in place that look like the road signs. Uh, I happen to think mine looks very nice. Uh, and one advantage of, of mine is that I handle uh, route concurrencies. You can see here I've got 83 and 695. And uh, although MapQuest does uh, a similar thing, um, they top out at two uh, routes. They'll, they'll only have a pair of things. And there are a lot of places in the US that have more than two routes on the same road. My rendering handles everything. <laughs> This is uh, around Indianapolis, and as far as I can tell, this is the most it gets. That's eight routes on one road. <laughs> so uh, there are basically three different parts that I, I put together to make my rendering. Um, for, on, for the data side, I had to use, this is actually a horrible typo, I had to use the OSM to PGSQL slim mode tables, um, the exact opposite of what my slide says, and I'll have to update that before I put it online. Uh, but I use the slim mode tables to get the data because the, the data that I need is not in the uh, regular rendering tables. I pre-generate all of the images for every highway in the US uh, because I couldn't get MapNIC to do what I wanted. And I have Python code running in the uh, PostgreSQL database to generate those clusters that you see basically as they're requested by the renderer. So let me go a little bit more into detail. Um, let me see here. OK. So for the database, I started out trying to use the, the data that's in the uh, OSM to PGSQL rendering database. And a lot of it looks kind of like this. This is all of the data for the Interstate 95 route relation in Maryland. And it actually gets put into uh, about a dozen different lines because the route relation has a whole bunch of ways that are a member of it. But I could not figure out a way to efficiently do an SQL query that would take all of the route relations uh, in an area and give me a list that said, OK, this line has routes Interstate 83 and Interstate 695. And this line has inter Interstate 83. And this line is just uh, 695. So 
as I looked further into the data, I found that the slim mode tables, which started out just because OSM to PGSQL needs to do a lot of work on the OpenStreetMap data to turn it from the, the OpenStreetMap data model into something that's easy to render. And the slim mode tables started out as a way for it to save all of that intermediate data without having to load it all into memory. So you don't have to have 64 gig or whatever memory requirement uh, they're up to now. But for my purposes, there is a relation table that has a parts uh, field in it, which is the giant block there. And that contains the ID numbers of every way, node, and relation that belongs to the relation that you're looking at. This is also Interstate 95 in Maryland. And then there's a couple other fields that uh, give you the indexes into this array uh, to say that, because they're ordered, all of the nodes are listed first. And then the way off gives the offset at which point the uh, ways start. And following the ways is the relations. I'm mostly only interested in ways here. Uh, so I was able to write a PostgreSQL function that if you give it a way ID, it does a query on the relation table and figures out which relations that way belongs to. So from there, I can say, OK, uh, what relations are here? What shields do I need to put on this way? Uh, I'm not entirely happy with, the, with this approach because I'd really like something that works on longer stretches of road because you know you 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 have a different way for each uh, lane uh, lane count change for every bridge, uh, and I'd like to do the rendering on a on a larger scale, but this is what worked. <laughs> so the next thing I had to do was figure out where to get the images for the shields, and fortunately for me. Uh, Wikipedia has Wikiproject US Roads, which is a group of people who are dedicated to making sure that every road has a sign in Wikipedia in SVG format in the public domain. So uh, I started out trying to take their stuff, uh, use blank uh, images, and do the standard Mapnik rendering where you have a, a blank image and Mapnik puts a little number on top of that. I ran into problems because how you put those numbers and letters and everything on vary from state to state. That's New York Route 9A, New Hampshire Route 25B, Texas Business Route 71F, and Georgia Bypass 67. And I could not find a way to make Mapnik do all of that. So what I ended up doing was making uh, templates where I do the basic layout, uh, and then I have a script that fills in the numbers and gives me each individual image uh, that, that then I can load in Mapnik. And even with that, I have to make a lot of templates. Just for the regular uh, images in Maryland, I've got four different templates, one for two-digit route numbers, one for three-digit route numbers where one of the digits is a one, one where for three-digit route numbers where none of the digits are ones, and one for Maryland Route 835A, which is the only one that's four characters long. <laughs> uh, and in my testing, uh, I experimented with both images that mimicked exactly what the roadside signs looked like and images that took a few liberties to make kind of a cutout style. Uh, eventually, I decided that I liked the cutout better for putting on maps. It, you can see what's behind it a little bit better. And I think most of the people I showed it to agreed with me, I think. Uh, what do we got here? Now, there's also routes that have names and shields, but not numbers. So I went through and found 
uh, a lot of those, and my rendering looks at the route numbers, but if there's no number, uh, it falls back to look at a name on the route relation. And so from that, we get things like the New Jersey Turnpike, uh, one of Kentucky's named parkways, Kansas City Turnpike, and one of uh, New York's uh, parkways. There are also variant routes, because my job wasn't hard enough. Uh, and normally, as you guys have probably seen, uh, the, these are done by taking the regular uh, signed on the roads by taking the regular sign and putting a banner on the top of it to say whether this is alternate route one or business route fi five or whatever. So for this, I separately from the, Im from the uh, shield images, I generate all of the banner images and then uh, my script that generates all this stuff just takes and sticks the two images together or in some cases three because parts of the US weren't content with being just alternate Route 15. They had to be business alternate Route 15. Uh, this is just an example of my, the, the source data I use that maps the templates to the numbers that get filled in with them. Uh, it's kind of a domain-specific language that I evolved based on what I needed. Uh, but on the left is New Hampshire's data. Uh, and it's pairing up the, the, um, uh, the particular templates with the numbers. And uh, in some cases, uh, a little further down, you see like route 10A, uh, because the A has to go in a separate place than the 10. We have a syntax for that. There's a lot of stuff. And then there's clustering. <laughs> uh, this is a thing that. Uh, uh, I, I started out working on this project with Richard Wheat, and he really pushed me to do clustering. I didn't want to because it looked hard. But uh, I, I think the results are, are really good. And this is done. I already have the images pre-generated, so I've got Python code that uses the Cairo library and just takes a list of, of routes, calculates out uh, how many it needs. It has several standard layouts that it uses and it just joins all the images together. Uh, this is kind of pseudocode for, for what I'm doing. But I have a function in the database that, as part of my mapnet query, uh, I call a function that does all the work to make the cluster, and then it saves it to a file, because mapnet can't read the images directly out of the database. So it saves it to a file, and then it returns to the query the file name. And then I use that in Mapnik, which feels a lot like cheating, but it lets me do the clusters as they're requested. Uh, because that way, I can have a, a database that's kept up to date with the, the minutely updates or whatever. And uh, I know that even if someone adds a new route relation, as soon as that goes into the database, I'll have the images ready for it. One of the other things that I did was try to look at the orientation of the way that I'm rendering this for and change how I do the cluster to kind of match the road so that it looks more like the, the, the shields are, are strung out al along in the direction that the road travels. Uh, the way I do this is really simple. I look at the first node of the way and the last node of the way, I draw a line between them, and I see which of these eight orientations that, that matches most closely. And sometimes this doesn't work well if a road's like really wavy and uh, you know mostly it goes east to west, but there's a section where it curves and goes straight north south. And if Mapnik decides to put a cluster there, then it looks kind of bad. But it's the best I've found that I can do with the way that Mapnik works. There are also places where you have overlapping routes that get their own special signs. Uh, up in New York, where US 1 and US 9 overlap, instead of putting two signs next to each other, they've chosen to sign it as Route 1-9. So I also had to build in a pre-processing step where first I get all of the routes that Away belongs to, 
Then I have to filter it to see if I need to change any of that to combine any of them. And then the result of that gets handed to the cluster generating uh, algorithm. So that's what I've got now. I have plans for the future, <laughs> but uh, I don't know when I'm going to get to all of them. Uh, one of the things I'd like to do with this is get it on the OpenStreetMap.us uh, server. Right now, I've got a public thing that runs off of my home server, which is at the end of residential DSL, and it's not very responsive. Uh, Toby Murray is, has done a little bit of work in trying to get this set up on the OpenStreetMap servers, but he ran into some undocumented features that I either need to document or fix uh, before other people can use the code. Uh, I've got the US uh, and US states supported pretty well. I'd like to get more county support, but there's a lot of variation in the way that counties sign their county routes. And there isn't quite as much consensus on how county routes get tagged in OpenStreetMap, uh, at least as compared to the consensus around uh, national and, uh, and state routes. I'd also like to expand this rendering to other countries. Right now, I've got uh, a bit of Canada done. I don't have all the provinces. And uh, I have kind of some test renderings from Mexico. Um, but I think this is the US is not the only nation that, that, that has specially shaped uh, road signs. So I think it'd be nice to have a worldwide map with the option to have the shields look like the signs. Uh, I'm also working on getting more of the one-off shields, like the New Jersey Turnpike. There are a lot of those are around the US, at least, where there's the you know, just this road has this sign. Uh, I've actually run into problems with some of those because uh, all of the data, all the images and everything that I have here, uh, I've put under uh, the public domain. It's actually a, a Creative Commons CC0 license and PDDL for uh, some of the data. Uh, some states have trademarks on their shields. Uh, some of them even have copyrights on them, which kind of impedes my ability to distribute the images based on their shields uh, fully. Uh, and I don't, I haven't completely worked out what I want to do with all that stuff. Uh, I also have plans to add bike routes because right now I just, I just do roads, but there are, there are bike routes that have their own uh, road signs, and I think it'd be nice to have that on the map as well. Um, the, uh, the really big thing that I would like to work on, and I have no idea when I'm going to have time to do this, is to try to get clustering support in MapNIC to where I, can you, where I can have a MapNIC rule that says, yeah, if you try to render a shield where there was already another shield, instead of giving up and not doing the second one, which is what it does now, uh, get rid of the first one and, and cluster them together. Like I said, I don't know when I'm going to have time for that, but it's something that I would really like to see because then more people can do this without having to have Python code running in their database. So I've got uh, the code up at launchpad.net slash OSM shields and uh, my example rendering, which as I said is on my home server, so don't be surprised if it's slow, is at uh, lron.aperiodic.net slash shields. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Uh, so she asked how, how the clustering works at different zoom levels and what it decides to put on uh, um, into the clusters. Uh, what, what I have I actually base the, uh, the shield and cluster rendering off of the, uh, the road classification. But for a given road, up to about, well, from, from zoom eight uh, and, and higher, it does the full cluster. So if there is, 
like the the uh, Indianapolis example I gave with the, the eight shields, um, if you're zoomed all the way out, that's still uh, a motorway, so it'll try to make the the full cluster. But when you're zoomed that far out, it doesn't have room for a lot of the, the big clusters. Uh, from zoom level, I think, five through seven, I don't do any clustering, and I just go off of the... Um, the geometries for the interstate routes, just to show, and I think I only show the two-digit interstates. Like I just skipped the, the the three-digit ones as well, just to give a general overview. Yes. Yeah. So he, he suggested putting up a wiki page with uh, the, the shields that I'm missing. Um, and at, at the moment, I do have all of the, uh, uh, the US state shields, as well as federal. Um, but yeah, I could, I could definitely put that up in the, in the OpenStreetMap wiki and just say, I'm looking for this. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry? So he, he brought up the, uh, the symbol tag uh, for, the, for route relations, which is documented, and some people use it. Uh, and, it and it usually links to um, a uh, Wikipedia SVG. I actually deliberately decided not to do that because um, I wanted a little bit more control over what images got put on the map. Uh, if, if it's within the, the structure of the, the network and reference number that, the, that the, the routes define, I can fit stuff into that. But I was a little leery about letting people link to arbitrary images anywhere on the internet and automatically putting them on, onto my map rendering. Yes. Uh, my, my decision to do what? Um, well, okay, so his, his question was what was behind my decision to use an official highway font uh, versus uh, just like uh, like MapQuest does with uh, a regular rendering font. And a lot of that was because I wasn't able to get MapNIC uh, to, to do clusters and the, um, and the, the, the different sort of, uh, uh, the different sort of structures that I needed with like New York no Route 9A where the nine is bigger than the A. And so since I was generating the images myself anyway, I figured, well, I might as well get them as close to the, uh, the, the highway signs as possible. Yes? All right, so he, he asked, uh, uh, looking at the, the US Route 1 and 9 concurrency, he thinks that that's, like, it looks bad to him. And he, and he asked uh, whether I had any uh, thoughts about improving the images as opposed to just uh, matching exactly what the signs were. And I, I considered that. There's actually, um, even beyond the, uh, the, the, the 1-9 concurrence, uh, there are a bunch of the like, individually named routes 
where the shields don't really look all that great when they're rendered like 24 pixels tall. Uh, but I decided to, to try to stick as closely to the, the images as possible for two reasons. One, I want to match what people will see when they're driving on the roads. Um, and if, if, if you're kind of confused, I guess, by the, the US 1 and 9 on the map, at least you'll be just as confused when you're trying to drive on the road. <laughs> uh, and the, the, the other reason is that um, I wanted to go for just as hyper accurate as I can and then make the code available so that other people can, can take that and build on it. And you know, I figure if I go as far as possible in one direction, that leaves room for other people to take it and adapt it you know, anywhere uh, you know, back from that. So I think, all right, I have time for just a couple more questions if there are any more. All right, I guess that's it, so thank you.